So I wanted to make a quick video to talk about a topic within Dynamo called element binding. Uh, so you may or may not know Dynamo has this built-in process called element binding that lets you update elements or create new ones based on however the node worked previously. So let's build a quick graph to demonstrate this. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to place some family instance options by point going to actually place a family instance by a family type and a point. Uh, so now we'll also pick a family type. In our case, I pulled a Revit family, kind of a funny one, uh, from Revit forum. So I'll include the link in the description below. Uh, but there's a whole forum post with all sorts of crazy Revit families. Uh, this user, ScourDX, makes some crazy stuff. So go check it out. You can get the family I'm about to use there. Uh, so we'll go ahead and place a family type and then we'll also place a point by coordinates node. So to make this a little easier, I'm going to drag my dynamo window over to the left. We'll collapse our library and we'll see how this works. So once we connect the point into the point input, it creates the Revit element. If I disconnect it, it disappears. This concept is known as element binding and it actually stores the values within your Dynamo file. I'm not going to dive really deep into element binding in this video, but I will link another post by Jacob Small on the Dynamo forum that really goes in depth. Like Jacob goes into it crazy in depth. So go check out this post. He has an AU class as well if you want to learn more about it. Uh, essentially, for our uses, it'll make the element disappear or kind of move around. Uh, you can also see that if I were to manipulate this point, the element actually moves. So this is great and all because I would want that to happen if I'm interacting with this in a mode that's automatic. If I were to save this graph, I'll just save this onto my desktop as an element binding, has the graph name. Awesome. And then we'll change it to run a uh, manual. We'll hit save again. Uh, what happens a lot of times with element binding is if I were to close this, uh, I can even fully close Dynamo if I want. And I want to reuse that graph in the future. I might open it up, change some values. So I'll change this a bunch and hit run. Something might happen like that. This isn't great because I might have wanted to keep that old version. If I was in the same Dynamo session, I want it to update. The fact that I'm not, and I'm in a new session, I more than likely want a new version of that element. So we have a few options in Jacob's post. He covers how to do that manually by editing the text of the Dynamo file. Uh, but I want to show another method. So what we'll do is we'll just hit run, make sure that element exists. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll expand Dynamo a little bit. So if you have Monocle installed, which is a package for Dynamo that adds all these little ribbon icons and all sorts of stuff, there's actually another option in here that's a little bit hidden called flush bindings. So what this does is after you've ran a graph and you're happy with it, you can go in, click flush bindings, hit save. And now when I reopen this graph and change the value, so I'll change it quite a bit. We'll actually move it two directions, so that way it's pretty apparent. It will create a new instance of that element. So that is important. So if you ever just want to clear those bindings out of your file really quickly before the next run, you can absolutely do that. One thing to keep in mind is this is now connected to this new element. So if I wanted a third one, I would have to save, flush bindings, make sure I save, reopen the graph and it will create a new instance once again. So that's a really quick way just to clear out a file. I personally, if I were distributing graphs, I would always run the flush bindings before sending it off to someone because it also just minimizes the file size and the runtime. Uh, once again, Jacob goes into it into his post, but element binding will make the file run a little slower sometimes because it's trying to reconcile some of those differences. Uh, so now you can have those things update kind of how you want. Another quick tip, if you just use Dynamo Player, it doesn't use element binding by default. So each time you hit run in Dynamo Player, it would make unique instances. So that's another easy way to avoid it. 
Uh, most of the time you do want it, but sometimes you're creating certain things by level or something like that, and you don't want your level one elements to move to level two and so on. So there it is, it's in Monocle. Check that out and hopefully that helps explain it a bit. Uh, be sure to check out the links below for a little bit more information on element binding.